Hey everyone, my name is Chris and welcome back to the Rideshare Hub. If you're new here, the Rideshare Hub is a channel all about being a better rideshare driver and making money. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. Before we get into the video, if you're interested in becoming a Lyft or Uber driver and you want to get a sign-on bonus, use the links in the description below. Alright, today's video is 10 things I wish I knew before becoming a rideshare driver. So number one, how to navigate the apps better. Uh, when I first started, I wasn't really sure on how to navigate the app, and it just kind of made it a little bit harder at first. So I definitely recommend, uh, once you download the driver app, to kind of go through it and kind of understand it a little bit. Talk to another rideshare driver as well, uh, just to give you that first-hand experience. Number two, uh, not to chase surge or primetime pricing during peak times. That was a big one. Uh, when I first started and I saw the surge pricing or the primetime pricing and it was, uh, you know, two, three, four times the amount, I'm like, oh, I got to go get it so I could get a better, better rate. But every other Uber or Lyft driver is going to be doing the exact same thing, or at least the people that uh, don't realize not to chase it. Now, if you're in and close to that area, when you're done with the ride, Sure, you know, go that way, see if you get it, but don't go out of your way to chase uh, surge or prime time pricing. Number three, know the hot spots, the best times uh, in the day, best times like day or night, uh, where to go, those types of things. Like what's hot going on in the city, uh, what, what's going on. Uh, just knowing those types of things will give you a uh, better chance of getting rides, uh, depending on what it is too. If it's like a sporting event, it can be a longer ride. Uh, so it just really depends on what's going on that day or that time. Number four, um, how much mileage it can actually put on your vehicle. Um, you know, when you're driving and you're on for a few hours a day, you know, you're putting a lot of miles on your vehicle. The good thing about that though is, your vehicle actually does become an asset instead of a liability. So that's always a good thing. Uh, vehicles are normally liabilities because you got to keep paying for them and they depreciate with value. But the good thing is with it being an asset, you know, it's going to start making you money. And that's what Uber and Lyft really is going to do when you're a driver for it. So number five, uh, understanding the platforms better to help passengers navigate both the app and just answer questions in general. Uh, when you first start off, they don't give you a lot of training. So it's very difficult unless you have talked to other rideshare drivers and kind of know what's going on. You do pick it up over time and just things that you hear. Uh, but at first, it, it's very difficult to know that. So if you look at uh, different forms online, watch the Rideshare Hub or other YouTube videos, uh, it's definitely going to help you out. Uh, with being able to understand uh, what's going on, how to answer questions for people. And then if you don't normally use uh, Uber or Lyft as a passenger, uh, just go around and use it a little bit more uh, just so you get familiar with the different process and how to use it. Number six, uh, how much money you can actually make. Uh, you hear things all over that people say, oh, I can make this amount of time, this amount. Uh, but you know, you, you can make a lot of money doing it. It just depends on how much time you put in. So it's pretty cool on that and how much money you can actually make. Uh, number seven, uh, preparing for taxes and having the info for tax purposes and de possible, de uh, impossible deductions. Uh, it's definitely something that's different, especially if you're a normal W2 employee and when you drive for Uber or Lyft, you're a 1099 employee, which also means you're an independent contractor. So the company does not take out taxes when they pay you. You have to keep track of that information. Uh, and you're also eligible for certain tax deductions. So I highly recommend getting yourself a tax preparer uh, when you drive and talk to them about what you need to have in order to take advantage of the tax deductions that you're eligible for. Uh, one tip that I'll give you real quick, download a mileage tracking app and use that whenever you drive because that's definitely going to help and uh, it's definitely going to make a difference for you. But talk to a tax preparer as well too. Number eight, 
Take advantage of the places partnered with Uber and Lyft. When you become a driver for Uber or Lyft or both, uh, Uber and Lyft are both partnered with other places. Uh, it could be like Jiffy Lube to get oil uh, change cheaper. Uh, it could be AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts to get parts for your car cheaper. Uh, it could be even be um, getting movie tickets at a discounted price. But take advantage of those things because it's going to save you more money and keep more money in your pocket, which is pretty cool. Uh, so they do a lot of different things. There's a reward system with Lyft. Make sure you use that to your advantage because uh, that's definitely going to be uh, helpful for you. Number nine, really how much fun it is overall at being a rideshare driver. You know, you get to meet a lot of different people. And when I mean a lot of people, I mean you meet all aspects of life from different countries, from different areas, and you get to talk to them for a few minutes while you're driving them around. It's really cool to do that. I've talked to people from China, from uh, uh, Romania, from, uh, you know, the Middle East, everywhere. And you really get to talk to, to people and get to know them. So that's a really awesome, awesome thing. And number 10, I wish I would have started sooner. <laughs> Ultimately, uh, I've been kind of, I was contemplating it for a little while. And then I just decided, yeah, let's go for it. Let's do it. And hey, then I finally started doing it. And I'm like, oh, I wish I would have started sooner. So if you're on the fence, Sign up now and use those links in the description below, but definitely do it because it is fun and you, you just have a great time doing it. So that's 10 tips that I wish I knew as a rideshare driver before I got started or right as I was getting started. So I hope that helped you guys out. Uh, thank you for everyone watching. Again, if you're interested in becoming a Lyft or Uber driver, use the links in the description below and make sure to subscribe if you want to see some more videos like this one. Also, check out my channel called Real Rideshare Stories, where we show actual rideshare events and what happens during rides. Uh, this has been another episode of the Rideshare Hub. See you next time.